I'm Dave from Dino PC, and today we're going to be showing you how to install this liquid cooler. So this is the last part in the how-to guide that we filmed all in one day and that I decided to split up into several parts. But today we are doing what people think is the most complicated and that's installing a water cooler, an all-in-one li uh, liquid water cooler. But it's not actually that complicated. Here's Nicola to explain. Okay. So back again to play motherboard, the CPU is in. As you can see, I cleaned from the thermal paste that was uh, from there from before. And now we're gonna go to step number three, how to install a beautiful Corsair liquid cooling. So it may look very complicated with lots of uh, tools and screws, we don't know what to use. It's actually, in my opinion, easier than installing the cooler we just uh, finished installing. So again, let's start with the back plate. In this case, Corsair have been very cool. So as you can see, the guides move left and right, up and down. This is because the holes, depending on your socket, may be in a different position. So let's just match the holes in this case. So one is gonna go there, one is going there, there, and there. So obviously this is plastic, you can move it around a bit the, the way you like. Uh, then, let's go to the screw we need for the motherboard. We got two sets of screws. So this set of screw is for AMD, so we won't be using it now, so we can put it on the, on the side. You can find all these informations in the manual. If you're not sure which, screw, which screws to use, they are all different and is explained on the manual. The main bag we're going to use is this one, and we're gonna just grab the screws we need. We most definitely going to need this, so let's put it on the side. And then we have eight types of uh, spacers. As you can see, there is a, a substantial difference between the two. One is much longer than the other. So the short one is used for X99 chipset, which is not our case because we're working on a Z170 motherboard. If that, if you were using an X99 chipset, then this would be the extension to use, the spacer. So let's grab this one. Uh, the two things are exactly the same, so we can just... So first, let's allocate the one we need and keep the other ones on a side. Okay, let's turn the motherboard back to the front and let's screw in this bit. So the back plate is gonna be hooked to the motherboard. So it's in, in all armor one, we can do all of them. Okay, once this is done, the back plate cannot come off and this is all perfectly screwed in. One thing I would do before applying the actual pump and cooler on the socket, I will start working on the cooler itself. Why? This is an H80 water cooler from Corsair. It works in a push and pull way, meaning that there's gonna be a fan here blowing air in the radiator towards the radiator and there's gonna be another fan here pushing air, grabbing the air, going through the radiator and push it outside the case. So, one important thing to know, we have fans here. This fan will spin this way and it's gonna blow air in this direction. So grabbing air from the front and pushing it on the outside. So we want the air to be pushed here on the radiator. If you are not sure which way the fan is spinning, there are always, if you can see it, some arrows here. Every fan usually it tells you which way the fan is spinning and which direction the air is blowing. We have the fan spinning like this and the air be pushed this direction. So we wanna hit the air on the radiator so the fan will be installed like this. I would suggest you to install this fan, one of the two fans, before you install in the radiator or uh, the liquid cooling on your motherboard. This is because this huge bit is gonna be attached to the case. And sometimes spaces are narrow, you don't wanna work inside the case to install both of the fans. So let's install one for now. We're gonna need another set of screws, which are these ones. 
They are very different from the others easy to recognize and they are very long because they need to go all the way inside and also this bit needs to be anchored to the radiator. So don't force the screw too much. When you feel that you have reached the bottom, just stop pushing or you're gonna break the fan. Now the fan is in place, as you can see. So you can see the fan is installed now. There are this, these two arrows. They are telling us that the fan is spinning this way and it's blowing air towards the radiator. Back to the motherboard. Voila. You have the back plate on yet? You do have the back plate on. Yes. So, as you can see, this is the part that we will cool down the, uh, your CPU. The water is gonna travel in the pipes through the radiator and be uh, very, very cold when it touches the CPU, keeping your CPU cool down. As you can see, we have some guides here and we just simply need to match the extension we just installed. Uh, I would suggest to take some time to uh, check how your case layout is. This massive, this massive uh, radiator can, uh, needs to be hooked at the case. So some case can be hooked here at the top, some case maybe on the side here, other case at the, here, other case at the bottom. It really, really depends. So I would suggest you to look at your case first and decide uh, which direction install to install this bit. This is because the pipes are not long enough to, uh, let's say we have the uh, connector here at the back and we install it like uh, this, is more likely not to, to reach there or vice versa. So in this case, I'm gonna go for just a standard in installation. My motherboard will sit like this on the case. So I'm a perfectionist and I want the Corsair logo to be straight in front of me when my computer is gonna be in vertical position. So for this example, we're going to install the cooler this way. As you can see, the holes are perfectly matching and we're just gonna use this to block it. Again, just put it in position and you're gonna screw it all the way to the bottom later on with a screwdriver. As you can see, we got some connectors coming out from the pump. We are already familiar with one of these, which is the one that needs to be plugged where the CPU fan is. This is actually not giving power on to the fan because this is a liquid cooling. So there is a pump inside here that needs electricity to work. So we are going to connect this cable to the where before we connected the CPU fan. So one pin will be out. Don't worry about it. That is normal. This specific connector has only three plugs. So one of the pins is gonna stay out. Before we had uh, all the pins were covered, that's because uh, the fourth pin is necessary to show at what speed the fan is spinning. In this case, it's just giving power to a pump, so it's not necessary to know at what, what speed the, sp the pump is spinning. On the other end, we have this connector, and as you can see again, with four pins, which is where we're gonna connect the fan coming from the radiator. So the step is gonna be this one. Voila. There is a spare one because, as I said before, in this cooler, we have a second fan, so we will have to plug both of them inside like this. So, this is the setup. Now, when we install a liquid cooling, part of the job needs to be done on the motherboard, part of the job needs to be done on the case. Now, the job on the motherboard is done. As a general indication, I would suggest to install the backplate, build the computer and install the radiator and the cooler for last. This is because it's easier to work. You won't have this bit lying around. It may smash something, fall and whatever. So uh, remember, first install the backplate, the very, very last step, install the uh, liquid cooling. 
One thing the, this specific liquid cooling has is this cable here. This is nothing more than a normal USB cable. This is a mini USB and this is a USB header for motherboard. What does this do? This will communicate, this cable will uh, allow the cooler to communicate with the motherboard and it will tell you the temperature of the computer, how quick the fan are spinning, uh, you can change probably the color if I remember properly and things like that. So this is, link. is called Corsair Link. This bit, the USB, goes directly in the cooler. So let's just find, as you can see, is it here? So it only, only goes in, in one direction. This other bit goes in the motherboard. As you can see, as I, as I mentioned before, can you read here? Here at the bottom of the motherboard, we see we have two USB header, and as it says on the label, USB one, USB two, and we simply grab the connector and we plug it in here. It only goes in one direction, so never, never force it. Okay, you will need to be a bit smart while doing your wiring. This is why even this step, I tend to do it towards the end because I will have my graphics card in place, the RAM and all the cable from the power supply. So maybe I can decide to hide this cable somewhere. So also this step, I tend to do it towards the end of the build. The last step would be to connect the radiator to the case. We're gonna show you how to do this in a different video, but I would like to remind you one very, very, very important thing. The way the air blows on your radiator is gonna make the difference on how your uh, liquid cooling is gonna work, is gonna perform. Let's, so we know that now this fan is blowing air on the radiator this way. We want the second fan not to push in this direction, but we want to grab the air coming from this fan and help it to go outside. So we're not gonna install the fan this way, otherwise it's gonna push this direction and the other one is gonna push that direction but we want to install it this way. So this fan is blowing in and this fan is blowing out, helping the radiator to have a constant flow of air going through it and keeping the liquid cooling that is inside this pipe very, very fresh. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Um, next time we're going to do installing the uh, motherboard into a case, the do's and don'ts, and what exactly you need to look out for when doing it. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a thumbs up as it helps us out greatly, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. I don't really know what to say at the end of these things anymore other than... It's very noisy here today. People being noisy, Marco. I can see you there being noisy. Ending up in the blooper reel, Marco. That's right, I'm watching you. I'm watching you. <laughs> oh dear. Next time, guys.